Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to have to welcome you to a very, very special event I like to call fucking shit or fucking around with shit. Today I'm joined by Check that shit out. Michael Dat Hill. Say hello, Michael. Okay, fine. Be like that. Also, this shit. Mass Effect, I'm getting... Oh, that was... I knew there was there a game, new Mass Effect game. I wasn't sure if I was tripping or not. Michael, you can hear me, right? Michael. Mass Effect and Jarvana has been in the works for, like, forever. But, uh, the, uh, the new system seems like it's gonna be a little bit of Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 2 <laughs> oh, So is you motherfuckers battle. just ignoring me? Can y'all not hear me? Oh my god. Haven. Yes. Wow. Wow. Y'all some asses. Okay, and welcome to another exciting episode of Fucking Around. Not really presented by Token Podcast peoples, but more like literally what it sounds like, Fucking Around. Today I'm joined by Michael Dat Hill. Say hello, Michael. Uh, <laughs> uh, Fiona Rosa. Hello. And don't say hello, Haven Morris. All right, fighting badges. What's up? Oh shit! I got the cops on me. Ah! <laughs> I, okay, that sounded very realistic. <laughs> Like, I thought he was being chased by the cops in real life. For those of you that can't tell, which is all of us, uh, Haven is currently playing Sleeping Dogs while we have this discussion. And unfortunately, he got caught by the popos. Don't worry, you'll be fine. I... Asian lives matter. Asian lives matter. And if you get in a car or something, hit the mute button. What the fuck is that? Me running, I guess. <laughs> Pro tip. It, it's ingrained from freaking, what's it called, GTA. I'm always used to having to tap A to run. <laughs> Ironic. Anyways, well, today isn't a normally scheduled podcast, so the topics are pretty simple, or it's more like a 21 questions type deal. Uh, I'm drafting up new content, which is part of uh, the job of a general manager, or probably not, but given my circumstances, it's part of my de- job. And one of the things I've come up with is kind of sort of a, a tandem review. Yes, we're still doing review shit. But more along the lines of for movies and TV shows. But not just shit everybody's seen like Game of Thrones. But more also stuff that, you know, people might not know exist. Or stuff that might might come a sleeper hit or pop culture hit. Like for one, for instance, Mr. Robot. Who's watching that right now? Not me. Nope. Seems like it's only you, bro. That's perfect. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. So here's what's going to happen. Uh, assuming you want to do it, either you, Fiona, or you, Hill, I'm going to send you the entire first season. Don't ask me how. Don't ask me where I got it from. And assume anything I give you fell off a truck. And after you watch it, or at least watch half of it, we're going to sit down and have a little five to ten minute discussion about it. And we're going to put up some background footage probably of trailers and commentaries and whatnots and shits like that. Until YouTube fucks with us again. Because let's be honest, that's going to happen. I consider it not even an inevitability so much as a causality at this point. So, with that being said, uh, does that interest either one of y'all by chance? Free TV shows? That sounds good. And movies. Sure. Okay. Now, which one of you has Send Anywhere installed on your machines? I do. I think you made me do that. Yes. Yes, I did. But I don't know if you actually did it. I probably did. I mean, if you made me do it. I'm just going to leave a link to the website just in case you can't find it. Okay. Beauty of Skype, you can still get the value of texting. Also, you'll notice directly above that link to the website is the latest epic rap battle, which is Wonder Woman versus Stevie Wonder. Show of hands, who saw that coming? 
Like I could see the hands. <laughs> I'm sorry, repeat that? Yeah, yeah. The newest epic rap battle is Wonder Woman versus Stevie Wonder. Oh, yeah, I've already sent that. It's in the chat. Look at it. It's hilarious, but... In so many ways. So, so many ways. I just love that they got T-Pain to play in it. Yeah, like, I didn't see that coming. Like, oh, damn, I feel bad about that pun. But I wasn't trying to. <laughs> oh man! Uh, corny puns, 2016. I just love every time he he like punctuates one of his uh, jokes. He stares at the camera. <laughs> okay. Also, uh, all right. Well, again, this isn't the full PlayStation Experience podcast, but. We gonna call this the somebody watching TV. My husband is. Oh, that's a given. I can hear that. Seriously, turn that down. What's he watching? Um. Ah <laughs> oh, shit! Here we go. Here. Oh, the crush, the crush videos on YouTube. Man, I'm not even gonna go there. Anyways. All right, so another thing I was curious about is, well, whether you like it or don't like it or whether you, you know, even care it exists, the Nintendo Switch is pretty much only going to be half or be capped at about a two million first run, not for America, for the whole goddamn world. America? Fuck yeah. What do you mean, Nintendo? Yeah, well, yeah, that's, that seems to be the popular internet thing. Hey, Nintendo, why you gotta be stingy with them Switches? Honestly, the first it was the NES that everybody was pissed. You you shorthanded everybody on that. Well, now you only send in 2 million worldwide? My thing is, I think this time, I stress the term this time, I think there's a legitimate reason, but I kind of want y'all opinion on it. Because, see, as y'all know, I have a different perspective being... A general manager and whatnot but here's the thing Nintendo is producing a lot of products simultaneously and I don't mean well they got like five or six games coming out I mean no I mean okay I apologize uh, no, no, that's fine if you hit the mute button you can hear us and we can't hear him um <laughs> Nintendo fucking quite literally is producing different products that aren't even necessarily made in Japan but have to come out in a sensible amount of time and with certain volumes. If you stop and look at it, first and foremost, we're going to start with the things people don't know that they're doing. Who here knows what Fire Emblem Cypher is? Not me. I knew what it was at one point. I know Fire Emblem. (laughs) As do many people. Fire Emblem Cypher is Nintendo's physical card game yes they gave fire emblem a card game in japan and it's actually doing pretty well now here's the thing though the art has to be made and then the cards have to be mass produced and so do the box sets that they go in they're also making amiibo cards through the same company on top of actual amiibos which are now their own business but also owned by nintendo and even though they start production of the wii ug or the wii u in america they're still producing and increasing their volume of Nintendo 3DSs due to the gotta catch them all fever spreading like wildfire herpes. It's legit though. I didn't say it wasn't. I'm just saying that shit's contagious like wildfire herpes. Also, do not Google wildfire herpes. You've been warned. It's a challenge? No, no. It's just a fair warning. <laughs> I'm he's going to do it. Yeah, like a dumbass, he's going to do it, I bet you. I'm just saying, wildfire is Googling that, you're going to see some depressing stuff. Herpes, you're going to see some scary stuff. And I don't know if you've ever been on the internet with a safe search off, but anytime you put something depressing and scary in a search box, you're not going to get something you're going to want to remember. Just saying. But hey, what, what did you just know about me? Thing. Anyways, so with that being said, 
Then you also have to factor in the switch, the switch controllers, and then the switch uh, development kits, and then the cables that go to the switch, which is supposedly rumored as in I cannot confirm or deny, is USB Type-C, the newest, most powerful, godlike port on the entire fucking market. Because it does everything. It, it's it's like the transformers of cables as dumb as that sounds it's HDMI it has Ethernet capabilities it can transfer over 10 gigs or about 10 gigs of data which is insane and on top of that it can charge faster than any other charger you get all in one cable and if it reserves it can produce audio Sick. yeah yeah it's craziness and pretty much in the next five years, it's going to take over the entire world. Matter of fact, the next Samsung phone, oh, which I cannot confirm or deny, I know for a fact, will have Type-C USB standard. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> dun, 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 so dun. with that being said, I'm just curious, do y'all think that that's the reason why there's so few fucking switches coming out? Or do you think... They just fucking up like they normally do. They have it on a, they have everything on a set schedule for decades, and they don't want to change it, and so they're like, "Fuck it." When you put in things in perspective like that, like their money is being very spread, so they don't have. They still have to finish making all the Smash Brothers amiibos. I just need one more, and I'm pretty good. What you think, Fiona? No oh, shit, did Fiona die? She might have no. muted. Oh. <laughs> I forgot how to <laughs> unmute it. Oh man. Um, you know what? It probably is because Nintendo's just way behind in everything. As opposed to Xbox or PlayStation, in my opinion. No, no, no. You're absolutely right. Like, that's not even mm -hmm. an insult. That's just a fact that's been around for 10 years. It's... They don't know how well the Switch will do, maybe. So they're going to put out X amount, see how it does, and then decide on whether or not to bring out more. Well... At least Token Games is some of the only motherfuckers in America currently taking reserves. So, yeah, Internet, y'all might want to get on that. I just think it'd be yeah, really I'm... funny if everybody who's ever been on this podcast wants a fucking Switch. And the only motherfucker to get one is Hill because he reserved it. <laughs> that would be funny as hell. I'm getting mine. Literally, he getting his. I know for a fact. <laughs> Then we only you only got to put down a hundred two, which may be almost half the price. Shit, the majority of the work is done for you. Actually, no. If I'm counting right, according to our list here, you put down a hundred in the beginning, but since then you added another twenty five. So, yeah, you probably have already paid fifty percent of it. I like this. <laughs> I think the only decision you're gonna have to decide is. Do you want priority shipping or free? But um, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Anyways, so yeah, that's that's why I'm curious, like, because I know the general consensus is the same as it is with regular uh, disillusion on the internet, or rather the TV. Oh, I'm saying this opinion that I'm not letting anybody who would know the true answer speak on. So people will assume it's a fact and I can get away with causing chaos and slander and bullshit. But in the case of Nintendo, it's it's just, you know, a statistical average. They normally fuck shit up like this. All right, moving on. I want to take a small bit of time to thank the Marvel gods out there. And there's like seven of them, according to the continuity for fucking <laughs> allowing us to have a Marvel versus Capcom 4 in this bitch. And in that same breath, I curse you new person making Marvel versus Capcom 4 because you fucking up. 
You fucking up hard. How is he fucking up already? He's fucking up in ways that would make me think that this motherfucker either sucks at all fighting games or he has never designed a fighting game ever in his goddamn life. This motherfucker, uh, now I've sent the link already to y'all in the token podcast, the little 10 minute one that says no more assists. It actually goes into a lot more details. For instance, one, I'm going to give you some good and some bad. We did get a confirmation. No mutants will be left behind. Mutant lives fucking matter. They're not cutting yes, out. Yes, Gambit returns. Yes, they're not. They're not cutting out X Men or mutant characters in this new Marvelous Capcom. Please let a nigga get his Gambit on. Just let me get my Gambit one good time. He's been in every. I love Gambit. He's been in every single fighting game, including the non Capcom ones, until you get to fucking three. Literally, he's been a fighting game character since 1998. Why you gotta be like that? Actually, mm-hmm. even before that, there was Marvel superheroes. No, he wasn't in Marvel superheroes. X Men vs. Street Fighter. Yeah, I don't remember what year X Men vs. Street Fighter came. Out. I think it was 96, 97. Hill, when you get a chance, uh, look that shit up. But yeah, was he in the original, like the arcade X-Men? version? Yeah, he was in X Men vs. Street Fighter even all the way back then, which means that was either 97 or 96. Gambit been around. Even when the non-Capcom ones came out. The shitty 3D one that came out. Or the X-Men Mutant Academy series. Gambit was there. But for some yep, reason... 96. See? 3 specifically. MVC 3 was the first time we got no Gambit. I blame Channing Tatum's bitch ass. Also... Why the fuck does he want to play a goddamn Louisiana Creole when he don't even fucking speak any type of French whatsoever? <laughs> oh, he just wants girls to look at his abs and then they'll just forget he doesn't speak French. Right, because we all know Gambit doesn't wear shirts very often. Well, it's not even that. It's just get one of Gambit's mutant abilities is the ability to be able to seduce. So by default, you know, it would almost be an insult if a pretty boy or a sexy man wasn't playing Gambit. That's not my problem. My problem is is that that shit better not have anything to do with why we couldn't get Gambit in MVC3. I was chanting all over that Tatum and ain't shit Jamie Foxx can do about it. And before anybody says any weird shit about it, there's a music video called Chanting All Over Your Tatum where Jamie Foxx sings about Channing Tatum. It's, it's funny, but it's weird. I like the like dude that plays in uh, Battleship. He was a good choice the fuck are you talking about have you not seen uh origins i don't know you get to see gambit for like you get to see gambit for like two minutes (laughs) seriously i don't know what you're talking about really do you know how many things have the word origin in them no there's an x-man movie with um Origins in it. Oh, Origin is a mutant? No, it is the title. Oh, X Men Origins. I probably have seen it. All right, now there's a music video link to I Want a Channing All Over Your Tatum. I don't know why Miley Cyrus is there, but she's there. There's nothing we can I'm do afraid. about it. Yeah, yeah, everyone is. M- Miley, Miley Cyrus is the reason I will never tell any white children you can do whatever you want to do. Don't be ashamed of anything. Have no fear. Because they might turn into Miley Cyrus. Oh my god. That's a pretty low blow. No, that's not. It's a reminder. It's a reminder to all of humanity. When we tell each other that nothing we do can be or should be perceived as wrong or immoral, dumb or negative, look what can happen. Ask yourself right now, all of you, if you had a child right now, do you want your child to be Miley Cyrus? No. Oh, shit. Y'all said that at the same time. Oh, that was cool. But yeah, you see what I'm saying? See, I know y'all don't want Miley Cyrus to die or end up fucked up, kind of like 70% of the people that hate Justin Bieber, but well, he gives people reason to hate him. It's just she's so disturbing that 
you don't want that to happen or be in your bloodline. <laughs> and I, I honestly don't hate Miley Cyrus, but she genuinely creeps me the fuck out. And that's saying a lot, because I've seen a lot of shit and I've done a lot of shit. Anyways. You've been around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, even. Don't even. You already know I'm the oldest motherfucker in this chat anyway. Don't make it nasty. How old are you? What the fuck happened to my screen just now? Hold on. I was born in 89. Me no. too. What month? What month? April. Okay. Yeah, I'm the oldest motherfucker here. Now, um... <laughs> By a couple months, I assume. Yes. Now... That being said, so another thing that we found out is about is that they haven't even decided on what the fucking button layout's gonna be. They got uh, rid of three versus three. How how dare they? That's oh, it only goes downhill from here. Hill. That pun was intentional. They fucking took out the ability to use an assist. That's how you string together your best combos. That's, That's the only way to make a good combo in that game. Getting body rocked in the corner, send in that Dante. Okay. Now, the system that they're using is what I like to call, or what is referred to as, a switch out system. Now, it's pretty self explanatory, but I'll provide a little bit of a reference. See, they think. Or the person who came up with this shit thinks that he, you know, is somehow revolutionary and shit. Like he's actually somehow found a way to reinvent the wheel. Which lets you know this motherfucker's already done fucked up. So what he decided to do was make it so the characters can switch between each other. While they're on the ground, in the air, everywhere. But it slows down the game a little bit temporarily. So when the next character comes out they're already ready to continue the combo from any point. Um, we're assuming that it's going to eat up some of the meter, but they hit the, the, they hit the actual gameplay uh, user interface and HUD in the trailer, so we couldn't see anything. But here's an example of the combo system that they're using, which has been around since fucking 1998, because Dead or Alive came out with that shit. And since I'm pretty sure Fiona hasn't seen it, I'm going to give you the fucking, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, I'm going to give you the, uh, MVC4, which they're calling Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, uh, gameplay footage. Don't worry, it's only, like, barely 60 seconds. They didn't fucking want to try. <laughs> yeah, you think it's a joke. Damn, 300,000 views in 15 hours. What I wouldn't give to get that. Um, da, da, da. So, yeah. Yeah, you go ahead and take a look at that, Fiona. And Haven, if you ain't seen it, I know he'll have seen it probably like 16 times. It's only like oh. 60 seconds. My friend had that arcade, that exact game in his karate studio. Yeah, they took the tag system out of there, and they're acting like they somehow invented some new shit. But, uh -huh. exactly, but they slowed it down. So when the character comes out, it's almost like, you know, you're continuing right where you left off. Mm. Oh, and I'm pretty sure only me and Fiona remember this, but in a little game called Marvel Superheroes, there were items called Power Stones. Or the infinity gems, if you will, that could modify what your character does in the fight. Now, every game after that, or rather, every game after 1997, does not have those gems. They brought them back in this game. But they're trying to simplify shit to get more people to play, but you brought back something that makes the characters more complex. Right. Hmm. Logic fails. Right. 
Yeah, so yeah, that's the gameplay of Marvel's Capcom Infinity right there. Um, and, well, Hill, I kind of already know how you feel, and I'm pretty sure even if y'all don't really play fighting games like that, everyone knows that Marvel vs. Capcom is kind of iconic, just as far as games go. No matter how yes. messed up or corrupted, or how many infinite people find in those games, you have fun, and that's kind of what's important. Mm -hmm. Of course, infinite shouldn't be there, but you have fun with your heroes you grew up with. Yep. I'm exactly. In. I better see fucking Rogue. I better see fucking Rogue. You got Miss Marvel. Oh my god, don't get me started. Y'all, oh, oh yeah, uh, Hill Haven, y'all might not know this, but uh, Rogue's old abilities, she literally stole from Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel was stuck inside of Rogue's body for like three fucking years. Knew that. So, I did not know that. Yeah, so there, there was a whole like episode about it. Shit. But so, so here's the thing. Fucking... To have those two in the game at the same time, there's some shit right there. Like, I don't know if they're going to do rival battles or not. And on to the only good news outside of the fact that this game is coming out. Other than that, they're actually making a story mode this time. They're actually doing it. They're not putting in whoa, a, whoa, whoa. a story mode? A cinematic story mode with cutscenes. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. First you've caught my interest. Now you have my attention. I forget <laughs> where that's from. Yeah. That's from uh, the Django. Django? Yep. The J is silent. The D is silent. Screw that. Right. Screw that up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Tarantino screwed that shit up too. See, much I like no, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the movie sucked, it and it did to me, but see, Tarantino's last two or last three movies are his versions of older movies that came out that everybody loved or found deep meanings in and you know stayed in popular conscience for at least you know film student college kids. Glorious Bastards. Uh what is what he turned into Inglorious Bastards and Django Unchained was just Django. But there was deeper meanings behind them, but they all got fucking lost because of Tarantino being Tarantino. Didn't, didn't Tarantino likes bloodshed. What'd you say, Haven? Didn't he make uh what's it called? The uh Hapel eight or seven yeah. or whatever? Yeah. And he broke a priceless guitar for no fucking reason too. Making that movie. No. He took a guitar that was over 400 years old and broke it after he got it on loan from the fucking museum. And then he just gives it back to him like the shit was all sweet. No. <laughs> yeah. He is Australian. Oh, wow. That's fucked up. But, now see. I mean, Tarantino's Australians out of Australians are worse than Americans. No, I did not know he was Australian. No, no, he, no, they're not. The only ones that are worse than us are the fucking British. Anyways, hello, British people that watch this. The point five of you. Um, so a little bit about Tarantino's history with uh, drama, or rather, ignoring drama that he himself created. His first movie, I forgot what it was called. Um, oh yeah, Reservoir Dogs. See. The problem people had with his movie is that he was from an era where, you know, the internet pretty much couldn't catch you doing shit, which a lot of politicians still haven't fucking realized it's going to keep happening, and they might as well retire before they get caught doing some shit. Um, so, to a lot of people, including other directors, it looks like he completely ripped off to the point of plagiarized another movie. That was made in either uh, uh, Hong Kong or uh, China. I can't remember the title of it, but the premise is the exact same. And a lot of the shit even happens in the same order. Now, I haven't found any official statements that he's given on this shit yet, but it's Tarantino, so I'm probably sure he'll just say some type of coincidence. But when we get to Glorious Bastards, Glorious Bastards was a movie about a group of soldiers behind enemy lines that were trying to figure out how to get from behind enemy lines during the W2 era. One of which happened to be black. 
and there's a com comedic scene that happens when he was trying to get some answers from white German girls, and it was it was fucking funny because I'm like, nigga, how are you this stupid? It is the goddamn 1950s, and even if you're not in America, you know how shit works. That being said, that that was pretty much the movie. Now, when you get to Inglorious Bastards, it's comp it's just Tarantino, who, if memory serves, is part Jewish, basically trying to have a feel-good fuck Nazi movies because I hate Nazis because I'm Jewish. Now, don't get me wrong. There are plenty of movies like that. But, of course, it's Tarantino, so he took it to an extreme. The whole Nazi scout bullshit never happened. And, you know, no one's going to sit in a theater and kill non-combatants because it's not allowed. You can't go around killing non-combatants, even if they are fucking Nazis. And then all of a sudden, these guys just forget that they have bombs strapped to their legs? Hell no. <laughs> that does not happen. Whether you're a suicide bomber or a soldier, you do not forget. You're not allowed to forget where your fucking explosives are at any point in time. Look, hell, I bet you can call off 10 things any sergeant, let alone a drill sergeant, would do if they caught you fucking around with your grenades. Tackle my ass to the ground, do everything to beat me up, and say, since we're on this range, I'm allowed to whoop your ass right now. Oh, yeah, that's my favorite thing I like to hear. Man, the army gets up. They don't even hit you no more. It's like, who the fuck even lied and told you that? No, just because someone didn't get hit means that the you people stop getting their ass beat. It means they didn't get in fucking trouble or notice. All they have to do is make up an excuse now. Oh, well, see, when he grazed me, I felt something sharp. So I had to break his nose just to make sure. Like, motherfucker, like, I, don't, I love how I hear these old people say, they don't even hit y'all no more. Who the fuck told you that? No, 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 no. They don't hit the women. Yeah, I know it kind of sounds sexist, but it's 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 a genetic fact that's almost woven into men. You genuinely do not want to assault women, even if they're picking a fucking fight. And I feel like a lot of women know this, which is what leads to a lot of shit talking that normally wouldn't happen with a dude. If I'm a six foot two trained killer and I yell at people all day, psychologically damage them and shit. And if they piss me off, I whoop their ass. Then you tell me, oh, hey, uh. We're going to make all the bases now integrated with female soldiers. So, you know, they're going to get trained in basic at the same time. You think that dude is going to instantly start beating on some little five foot two girl who can barely lift 40 pounds? Hell no. No. He's still going to hit the dudes, but them chicks is going to be perfectly fine. I think that's where it might come from. It's just that the females are saying, oh, well, I never got hit. It's like, what'd you expect him to do? He's reason for that. Yeah. He'll kill you with a half of a half of a punch. He don't even eat the full thing. And they talk so much shit when somebody else can't do something and it's a dude. I'm like, why are you pissing him off? He's going to get a big ass gun that weighs more than 20 pounds in like three days. And you're going to be within his shooting distance. Why you do you really want to chance that? Anyways. So, uh, yeah, got off topic a little bit. But, yeah, that's that's pretty much all that's left on the good news front. Everything else is just a down downfall. 2v2, you're literally locked out of 3v3. Like they couldn't make it fucking optional. There will be DLC characters. Not surprised, still pissed. Of course, it's a fighting game. No, <laughs> it's a Capcom game. There will be no assist whatsoever. And we have absolutely no idea, no idea if they're going to listen to roster request. They will not confirm if they're even going to listen to roster request. You, you can't do that at this point. I mean, I know it's an entitlement, which is wrong, but still. Come on. Yeah, man. <laughs> Anyways. You got a whole universe to fuck around with, and you want to... And you know Capcom doesn't... Act, dude, Capcom doesn't know have these fucking characters. Yeah, they've released Marvel comics and Marvel in manga format. Fun fact, the X-Men cartoon, or rather the X-Men uh, uh, back from uh, the 90s, early 90s, were adapted. And 92. Adapted. Yeah. Uh, besides that comic, which I really need to find, because I don't know if they canceled it or not. Um, they also got adapted into a manga format 
in Japan. Which I'm gonna try to pull up. Coming. Yeah, which I'm gonna try to pull up for you guys. But you know, these characters and half the time when they get these characters, they usually just say something uh, a general vague guideline to fucking um Marvel. Like the reason we got Modok in is because the producer at the time said, Hey guys, you got anybody like weird shaped we can put in? He didn't he couldn't even think of nobody. Cause he don't know. And they just showed him Modoc, and he said, "Oh, that looks funny. We'll do Modoc." Now I'm not saying the current production team don't know their shit, or they don't know their characters. And to be honest, who really does? They have over three thousand characters. Yeah, you didn't think that, but they do. You got to remember that also includes the non-combatant characters. Right. Nee, 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 nee. Who's beating things up? Oh no, I'm just hitting my keyboard too hard. Shit on you. Okay, now prepare to be shocked and amazed at how adorable, <clears throat> how adorable, and somehow also sexy Rogue can be in manga format. Bam. Excuse me while I go look at this. I'm gonna actually stop what I'm doing. Is basically Bishojo trope, the Bishojo line of Marvel characters, which is animeified statues. Yeah, everybody looks like that, except Cyclops. He looks better than he did in America. Proof for it didn't happen. I just put a link in the chat for Cyclops. No, for the X Men manga series where they all look. Like manga characters, and it was official, official shit. I don't know. I don't dig what Rogue looks like there. I don't know. She looks pretty anime to me. She looks anime, but I mean, I'm I'm used to the hey baby, how you doing? I like how Rogue was technically never a sex symbol, but it just happened because of the fans doing it. That's what happened with Harley Quinn. I love how people try to justify the fucked up shit. Harley Quinn does, or their Harley Quinn fan. I'm like, she's a sociopath who's addicted to drugs and spouse abuse if they're even married. Stop she's not supposed girl. to be a sex symbol. You making her a sex symbol doesn't make any of that other shit go away. But almost from the first five years after Harley Quinn came out, all the fans sexualized her. We can't even blame that shit on DC. That was totally on the fans. I know for a fact that the creators said it. The people that actually made Harley Quinn, because people forget, Harley Quinn was never a comic book character. She started in the fucking TV show. Absolutely. She was in that little court jester, fully clothed outfit. But over time, fans started sexualizing her. And then when fans started sexualizing her, fucking DC jumped on the bandwagon. Of course they did. But I like the, but the Harley Quinn from the animated series look. No, dude, I like Harley Quinn in general, but I understand her character. I don't go in. I don't go in with blind faith, like people who say they like Cartman. It's like, okay, okay, listen, listen. You just told your Jewish friends you love Cartman. I want you to think about that sentence real quick. <laughs> but he's just a character. He's a character who continuously shits on their entire ethnicity, their religion, and their culture, and exploits them. And you just said you like him. In front of them. I want you to just think about I think what you meant to say was you think the character Eric Cartman is funny. Also, why the fuck would you think to bring that up instantly when you start talking to Jewish people? <laughs> That's pretty fucked. Like, and then even in Carly Quinn's current comic, she's basically almost Deadpool. She went on drug trips, acid trips. She magically became bisexual. Again, sexual, sexualizing bandwagon. And, well, really just dirty old men wanting to write nasty shit. Let's be honest. And, for some reason, she just can't not be popular. I'm not mad. I'm just saying the fact. If you go look up half of the people who cosplay, or if you just type in the word Harley Quinn cosplay, everybody trying to be in smut, and they trying to do sexy shit. That's because over time, it's like, ooh, let's try less and less clothes. I think, uh, well, yeah, and I think there's also, Fiona, you may have come across this, or at least you may have the actual name for it, but as a dude, 
we've noticed that there will be women who dress sexy on purpose not just because they have a naturally attractive body I mean they're going out of their way to look a certain way and then there are women who do worse than that and are completely oblivious to out this thing a concept called outfit perception if I'm a police officer and I dress as a police officer people are gonna think I'm what a police officer but it's a bit of a different ball game for these types of women I know they're oblivious, but I don't know what their actual name is. And anytime you want to talk to them about it, oh, you're just a prude. Something's wrong with you. First off, I didn't even say something was wrong with you. I was just asking, did you notice how sexy you dressing? All right. It's like they literally have fused cute, cool, and sexy all together. Something men haven't done and we don't do. Because we know cool, you know? The closest we've seen to a man trying to fuse cool and sexy, Prince. Pretty much it's it. the truth, though. Now, if we think sexy or a man trying to be sexy, Fabio. If you think it cool, dude, you well, it's different for everybody. But for, generally speaking, a cool dude usually, uh, fucking, uh, I want to say, uh, Matrix Two, Keanu Reeves. That was cool. Mm. Well, yeah, like Good I said, choice. cool males are by perspective. But generally speaking, we know the difference and we can distinguish between a cool male and a male trying to be sexy. I think somehow that got fused together when it came to women. Not all women think this way, obviously. I'm not going to throw you all under a blanket. But I've noticed a pattern, at least in America, where women don't understand that you thinking that this makes you more powerful doesn't make you more powerful. When you sexualize yourself, listen to the words. You are sexualizing yourself. You don't want to be objectified, but then you go and do things that someone who wants to be objectified would do. I don't understand that. I don't either, honestly. Like, you want to be left alone, mm -hmm. and yet you dress like a slut, and then when people pay attention to you, like you're like, get away from me. Ew. Why are you doing it then? <laughs> yeah, like, if you want to look sexy... And you only want to do it for you? Why the fuck did you put it online? Seriously. Or go outside with it. Do it behind closed doors. Oh, and I, I just I'm, love... Oh, gosh. I, yeah, <laughs> I just love how all these girls who cosplay or dress up in costumes, like, decide that they're models, but they have no, main, they have no weight main, main, maintenance goal. They don't have any type of beauty... Hygiene, beauty, cosmology regimen, other than I'm going to put on makeup today. Not saying that's a bad thing, but I've seen more. They have no talent agency and have not tried to seek a talent agency. And they want to get all of their work off of whoever emails them from their Instagram and their Facebook page. Like, that's not how this shit works. Yes, you are a paid model. You're a commissioned model. But it is a thing. That's not how you do a fucking career. Also, if 90% of your shots... Where shit you made for you, just where exactly is your career supposed to be going? And then they want people to do donate to them annually. Oh, oh, okay. Nope, doesn't work that way. If you, you want me to support you in a hobby, that's fine. If I think you're doing something cool, that's cool. And I'm going to try to help you, even if, you know, I don't think you're hot. Because realistically... I've met too many fucking cosplayers and people like that at this point in my life. I think I'm almost at 500 now. So, if I'm going to date me a cosplayer, I'm going to date me a cosplayer. But I'm definitely not dating her because she is a cosplayer. You know? So, I can see through a lot of bullshit. And I do mean that literally bullshit. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, I just like this character because she's so brave and strong. Okay, so... Now, so give me some of her top qualities, ex, other than brave ex, and strong. Excuse, excusing the fact that this character is basically walking around in a bikini. You don't want to be uh, sexually harassed, understandable. Victimized, sexualized, objectified. But when I go and look at your fucking cosplay, Instagram, and social media feed, you have pictures up, even though you're not doing them at a convention, of you doing smutty shit. And I mean that in a literal sense, like... You're doing implied nudity to get attention. You're doing 
panty shots in dark corners at conventions where no one's around, which technically counts as lewd acts in public, which is illegal. But you want to be treated like, oh, I don't know, Ellen DeGeneres. No. Ha, she got, got divorced. What, we're, what we have here is a disconnect with two particular words. One, hypocrite. And two, dumbass. I don't know if you've seen it, but there's a meme I made on Instagram. And, well, I mean, if y'all want to find it, go ahead. Uh, there's a bunch of girls dressed up as Evie. Not, nothing, nothing, you know, new. It's basically bunny outfits, but Evie formatted. They're almost, they're pretty much fully clothed, and it's really just a bodysuit, stockings, and heels. You know, supposedly it's sexy, but it's been in the mainstream so long, I don't really even consider it that. Now, 13 of them got together and decided to take a picture in the doggy style pose. Now, for those Why of you, would you do that? No, 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 no. Now, for those of you who don't know what the doggy style pole is, first off, you probably shouldn't be listening to this podcast. But it's exactly what you think. <laughs> they're bent <laughs> over like they're really dead or propped up against a part of a wall and a dick about to go in either hole number one or hole number two. And they're all giggling and smiling. But I bet you, if you go and hit on or try to ask, can you fuck any one of them girls? Yeah, you are perfect. And here's the thing. I know like four of the girls in, that, in the picture. And I'm just sitting up here like, you know what? I don't give a shit what nobody say, because here's my proof. But just to make sure I can find it later, I'm going to make a meme out of this. And then I did, I, I, but I couldn't decide, so I fused the memes into one. It says, taste the rainbow or kiss my ass. You decide. <laughs> nice. And you know what? Here's the thing, though. Not one of those girls has blacklisted me. Not one of those girls has approached me about taking it down. And not one of them have even owned up to how smutty this shit is. Not one. And they did this in the middle of fucking Yomakon. They went right up on the railing on like the <laughs> second or third floor and just said, hey, let's all take a giant ass shot. Let me go. People do not approach at conventions 101. Well, you can't avoid them because one, they're everywhere. Two, they don't know how they are until you tell them. But then once you do, you're the problem. Yup. I'm gonna pull up that news. I like being the problem, though. <laughs> well, see, it's not your fault. In fact, I would prefer you go up to them and say something to them just so they can say some shit back to you, and then you'd be like, well, so why are you doing this this way? Just to see what they say. Because if they say everyone else is doing it, fuck you. You have no fucking identity. You are a follower sheep, but you're trying to be a follower sheep slut and don't even realize it. Sheeple for the like, win. When I know... There, I know there are good. There are plenty of nice people that are sheeple. But when I bump into a fucking attention whore sheeple, I just lose my shit. I lose all respect for them, and I talk to them in the most calm and normal voice. And I just wait for them to fucking lose their mind because they don't want to admit I'm right. You see, I don't go in there trying to start shit or trying to, you know, put my opinions on them. And that's the one thing that pisses me off when I'm giving somebody facts. And they tell me I'm giving them opinion. Because what I hear is, you're lying. On purpose. Here's the truth. That's a lie. That's what I fucking hear. And I've almost never been wrong. And it pisses me off to this day. Found it. And boop. Yeah, oh my god, is that really going in the chat? Yes. Yes. That's not even yep. the worst thing that's been in the chat and you know it. Oh, believe me, I know it. Uh, let's see what this is. Jesus Christ, are you... F yup. Okay, gotta pause my game to see this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really do. Uh, let me just... Uh, uh. Why, why do these people exist? Do you know the one in the green? <laughs> yes, but you don't want to fuck with her. Mm. Does she live in Georgia? No. Oh, Damn. yeah. And here's something else I just happened to notice because, you know, 
dirty old man bandwagon. Like, I don't understand what is with all these Resident Evil costumes trying to be sexy. You are not going to give me a boner in a horror game. It's really weird. It's been happening since... <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. It's been happening since 5. They try to have these sexy-ass outfits. I'm like, why is this here? Or, you know, a uh, toy chica. The internet loves yeah. chica. All right, I just put another link in the chat. Go ahead and take a look. Oh, boy. Oh, and then my favorite part... They're not lonely. They don't need attention, but 90% of their fucking pictures on Instagram is their face from different angles. Why? At least I... <laughs> this the only su survival action sexy horror game. Yo. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going to post Chica in there. That, that would just be wrong. I don't even know who that is, so go ahead and do it. Don't. Okay. See, here's the I thing. I got it. You got it? I, I'm, I'm already typing it. See, see I know what she wants. See, here's the thing. At least I'm creative on my Instagram. Whether y'all don't check my Instagram out on a daily basis or you look at it maybe once a millennium, 90% of the shit on my Instagram, I fucking made. Or either I took the picture and I made the words to it. Like, real talk. So... When I see other people, oh, it's your face from a 45 degree angle. You know what? Let's try a 97 degree angle. I'm just sitting up here like, what What? What was the point of me getting on Instagram? I.e. my boss at Yomakon. Oh, get my ass in this angle. How about this angle? This lighted? Let's do that again. Who Damien. Seriously, stop that. Just remember, you asked for this. I didn't ask for anything. She ain't talking to you. Also, I no. put it, I, I put in my final little Instagram thingy in there just for y'all to fuck with. <laughs> you still on the chicken? Is she one? asking I'm, you, you what is she wearing? There you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Okay. Mind, mind you, this is what a the fucking fuck animal. is that shit? It's an animatronic, but people beat off to this shit. Oh my god, Fnaf porn. <laughs> Why are you yelling oh in my, my ear? Because it's nasty. <laughs> this is it. I will show you an actual picture of what she looks like. No, no, you're not, because I already know. I remember now. That's fr uh, that Friday Night at Freddy shit. How yep. did, why did people make a porn out of it? Oh, wait. Ha, ha, ha. I know the answer. Rule 34. Yep, I was about to say that shit, too. The female knows about Rule 34. No, here's my favorite one I don't get about Rule 38, also known as uh, female or opposite gender. Why is it any time somebody cosplays a female version of a male character, it somehow loses clothing? <laughs> Fiona, you want to explain it's that the one truth, to the class? Though. Honestly. And then if a man cosplays as a female character, it gains clothing. No, yeah. Yeah, it does. Like, it makes... I don't understand, like... I mean, do you really want us to wear the clothing that she was actually wearing? No, we can't, because we have penises. They may come out of the show. That's the whole point of extra clothing. But when it's a woman, it's like, why did you just decide, oh, you know what? I'm just going to remove this so my legs are out, my ass is out. Oh, and I'm going to use a push-up, bro. Why, why you, you do that, Fiona? You haven't seen my husband's Tinkerbell. I don't want to see your husband's Tinkerbell. He can keep his Tinkerbell to Close himself. Close chat now. <laughs> That's a terrible thought. Stop. <laughs> it hurts. I'm doing it. I'm I, doing I'm it. not clicking it. Don't do it, man. It hurts. <laughs> Mind you, six foot seven. Jesus Christ. Who's six foot seven? Six point seven what? That's how tall he is. Wait, 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 wait. Aren't you like 5'5"? Five, five? I'm 5'3". Five, mm. <laughs> You're 5'3". Okay. I remember five, three. this picture. You're 5'3". Hey. Yeah. How He's going to have back problems when he gets older. We don't ask those kinds of questions, Zach. <laughs> how dare you? How bad is it, Hill? I'm not clicking. Using this on my computer. And I have the chat side open. 
You what, know, these guys? they guys from Steven <laughs> Universe. Please don't ruin that for me. No, I no, I love Steven Universe. I would never ruin that for anyone. And not you, other people. Oh. oh, yeah. Too late. Don't look on Google. Don't look on Google. Yeah, don't do it. Oh, and here's here's just a side one that I thought was a funny conversation I had. Okay, so I actually sat down with a girl who genuinely came up to me and doesn't understand. Told me she didn't understand why. Well, basically, man hosts always try to chat her up on her pictures and cosplays and shit. And I'm just like, really? You don't know? It's like, you know, every time you say it like that, you imply you know the answer. No, I had not noticed. I was like, well, are you going to tell me? Well, no, I'm actually not going to tell you. Why not? I thought we was friends. Oh, it's not because we're not friends. It's because uh, I've had this song and dance at least 20 times, and it always ends the same way. Denial. Anger. Followed by acceptance. Basically, the, you know, the five, six steps to accepting cancer death. It's like that, except instead of dying, you go back into denial. So it goes in a circle. So I do not tell them. I'm going to tell you how you think what you wear works and how you perceive yourself. And I'm going to tell you popular consciousness, a.k.a. society. And the problem is, is that you think that not conforming to society somehow means you're doing the right thing or you're not warranting this shit. Let me ask you something. If I walk past a police officer and I slap him in the face and I You would get him. shot instantly. <laughs> yeah, yes. I know, I'm a darkie, but this, this will finish. And I slap him in the face and then when he arrests me, do I have a right to say, how dare you put me in handcuffs? Well, no, because you warranted it. Exactly. And that is actually a crime yeah. to slap an officer in the face. So, so, so I, it's known as assaulting a an officer and they can use deadly force if Haven. they feel threatened enough. Haven. Yes, we know. We're black. Except for... <laughs> Anyways, so... I told... So it's like, well, think about that logic. You don't want to be treated like a slut or a whore. You may say or think you don't have a slut or whore clothing, but you can combine your clothing to look like or emulate what would be considered slutty or whore clothing, which you don't normally do. But when you go and do that, a costume, and then you act a certain way, you take pictures a certain way, even if it doesn't reflect the character, how does that look? Well, I mean, she's brave and strong, so that means I have to be sexy. It's like, no man has ever said those words. You understand that, right? How many people have looked up to Superman and never thought, you know what? I just need to wear a red cape and a red thong and some boots. Yeah, that'll be brave. Super sexy, man. No, it, it, I'm pretty sure it happens in a strip club, but outside of that strip club, that has not happened. And I've seen a lot of cosplay. You, you don't know that. Hey, hey, Haven, Haven, I said it happens in a strip club. I didn't say it didn't happen. Now, here's uh -oh. a, so then I told her, hey, it's like, hey, let me, let me do you a favor. I told her about a good show called Gangsta. You like uh, brave, strong women or... Characters who would have a level of strength and are kind of sort of comical, right? Okay, well, what if there was one who wasn't, who wasn't, you know, in smut? So I showed her this. That image I'm dropping you in chat. Now, if memory serves, that character's name is Sophie, and they actually have a battle ranking. Okay. Fiona stepped out, but they actually have a battle ranking in the show Gangsta or in the manga Gangsta. And your dog tag dictates your, your, your power level. <laughs> and your power level is pretty much decided from fucking birth. So they know how fucking insane you are basically from the time you're born. Now this girl is in the lowest end of the highest rank. The, the highest rank is S. But the lowest number is 5. She's an S5. So by default, she's already stronger than quite literally everyone who has showed up in the show and the manga, except for maybe one person, literally one person. And you know what she told me when she saw that character? Even though they have similar builds and are both redheads, she said, ill, she wears too much. What? I, uh, I can't. It, it. See? The fuck? See, that's what my brain said too.
She has the perfect amount of clothing to look good but not get hit on profusely. Dude, my only my only problem with that outfit, and you know what, it's just a personal perspective, not a attraction perspective. Why the fuck she in cowboy boots? <laughs> I, I didn't even know that she was in cowboy boots. Exactly, because you stared at them titties. Well, I was staring at her shoulders, but let's go with that. <laughs> the shoulders, though. I'm weird. Get over it. We're all weird here. It just depends on what level you want to go at. Haven is the highest level. Yeah. I will destroy people's worlds with what I've seen. Okay, well, correction. Now that Val Morris is fired, Haven is the highest level. Yeah. But where's the put Dove in there? Oh, Dove is just fucking crazy. Like, literally, he takes medication. Dove is not okay. But I'm his friend, so I want to make sure I'm one of the people he doesn't shoot if he shoots up a school. <laughs> I like how you think I'm joking. I know you're not, but that reminded me of a terrible comedy strip where this guy was talking to like the quiet guy in his office and he gave him a Twix. And then the next day he's running through the office killing everybody with a shot out shotgun. Gets to his office and says, Thanks for the and stairs. Yes! He knows it! It's called Dane Cook. We all know it. He was very popular for a good amount of time. That was the first thing that popped in my mind when you said that. Yeah. I want to tell Fiona the story when she gets back because, well, she's a girl and it's funny, but she has a different perspective, which, as y'all have pretty much figured out, I like hearing different perspectives. But yeah, Dovid has seen some shit. Before he got back into America... You gotta remember, Dovid was in the fucking, um, Israeli army? Oh, oh, okay, that's funny. That's funny. His balls are sweaty. Knees weak, saw is heavy. There's vomit on his ACUs. There's vomit on his ACUs. DFAC spaghetti. Yeah, spaghetti. <laughs> oh, man, I want to post that, but I can't because I, I'm... Fucking am re-enlisting. And it's called why I'm not re-enlisting. <laughs> oh, that is so true. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Uh. And then we gotta pick it all up when we're done. Pick what up? All the brass. All the brass. Oh, I fucking hated that <laughs> shit. Dude. Dude, I don't know. Dude, I got thought we got lucky. Like, my whole entire unit and platoon, both times, both times they fucked me up and I had to do basic twice, we didn't have to do uh, weapon range except for once, right? But when we did, it fucking sucked because you think losing a bullet or losing a shell in grass is kind of easy to find. Mm -hmm. Try losing that shit in the goddamn sand. Oh my god. He was out there an extra two hours. And then they never checked on the range to see if shit worked. They found two fire ant hills. So we had two lanes that nobody could use the whole fucking time we was there for three days. And I'm sitting up here like, man, fuck this shit. Why do I have to do this a second time? I didn't even get kicked out. These bitches don't want to take my file that shows them I was on fucking blue face shit. This is annoying as fuck. My balls are sweaty. Knees weak. Saw is heavy. There's vomit on my ACU's DFAC spaghetti. And somebody did Just actually say vomit. Defects. For real. Yeah, but here's the thing. Someone actually did vomit, though. And then to top oh. it off, dude, guess who had to carry the 240 everywhere? Including the Yo. spare barrel. Yo ass. Yeah, I literally had to sleep with it next to my fucking bed. I'm so sorry. Dude, here's the fucked up part. You know the main reason why? Because the women were too weak. No, I'm not I'm not saying some sex is stereotypical. I mean literally. That weapon was so big and the weight difference was so bad that we on average, when they wanted to see the weapon, which is code for I wanna play with it, 
we had to make sure two of them were on it at once because th there was only like one woman the whole entire fucking time we was in basic that could actually support and hold the weapon alone. And all I know is it's a pain in the ass to pick up all the stuff from the saw or the 240. Yep. And then you also got to get links. Oh, God, fucking links. The only good <laughs> link is in Legend of Zelda. But then here's yep. the part that got me. I still have to carry my fucking weapon and I still have to be in full kit. So realistically, I went from weighing about 215 naked out the shower to around 255 for about three weeks. Because remember, I also got the spare barrel. And everyone comes to me, how are you lifting that so easily? I'm like, I'm not. It's not easy. I'm just not a little bitch. And I work out in the fucking bay because I know it only gets worse from here. Hint, hint. And I said that out loud. Hint, hint. And this little 19-year-old, 5 foot 2, can barely lift 30-pound chick looked at me like I spoke Japanese. I was like, holy shit, she really doesn't understand. There, was some, there were girls there whose wingspans were so shitty, they couldn't actually hold the weapon up and fire how they wanted them to fire. My gosh. Yeah. So even with the collapsible butt stop pushed in, their wingspan was still too bad for them. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I mean, all of I had some really short people in my basics training, but we could all fire the, the 240 and the saw. It now, was fucking hilarious. Now, don't get me wrong. It's like, look, I get that there are height discrepancies and shit and all this crap, but fucking, if your buttstock on your rifle is all the way pushed in, and they say that you, they only want you to learn how to fire from the shoulder to joint perspective, and you can't do that and hold the middle part or the front end of the weapon, you got a goddamn problem, and you really need to be learning how to hip fire and chest fire. We even had a short drill sergeant tell me, hey, look, you sure, people, you need to be like me. You need to learn how to fucking shoot from different perspectives so you don't die. And I'm sitting up here like, every single one of them brushed her off like you fucking idiots. The fuck is that? Are you chiseling something? What is that? No. They're, they're breaking ice in the front room. Oh. You got snow? Because I got No. We don't have, uh, what's it called? Ice cube trays. She buys it from Sonic and then puts it in the freezer and then breaks it apart. Because, because she doesn't want to pay $2 for an ice cube tray? Because she doesn't like regular ice. What kind of she ice? She likes it? it. You know, Sonic has them little, like, small ass ice cubes. Ah. Uh, okay, that makes sense now. So she buys those. And then she sticks it in the freezer and they'll clump together so she breaks them apart. Anyways, um, well, yeah, that was pretty much all I wanted to rant about because I don't really want to spoil all the PlayStation experience talk, especially since it's not even over yet, or rather it ends in about two hours. There's a lot of info and information to process. Also, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a game called No More Heroes by chance. Yeah, it's a Wii game, ain't it? Or what about Killer7 or Killer is Dead? Yes, I've heard of that too. All right. That company made a new game, and it's a free-to-play action gore MMO. And it's free-to-play, and it comes out today called Let It Die. Might want to look into it. Uh, is it out on the Xbox? Uh, probably. They don't normally make exclusives. 
It's free to play. It's called Let It Die. Um, look into it if you might want to be interested. If you might want to be into it. Also, don't forget that you know they're remaking all three original Crash Bandicoot games. So yay! I knew that shit was coming. Mm-hmm. I think we all kind of did after you know the Uncharted Four shit and also Skylanders. I'm excited. Oh, you came she's back. She's excited, and she's back. All right, okay. Uh, I, I had it in my ear, and he's like, all three crashes, and I'm like, fuck yeah. Oh, okay, so you heard the story uh, about the idiot girl I told you about? I heard the very end. Okay, well, I'm. A, you know what? Let me just say her name, too, because it's so generic white girl, she won't even know I'm talking about her. And that's a damn shame how stupid she is. All right, well, first off, let me copy the link back again. All right. Now, pay attention to this image of this redhead in the chat. All right, so, one of my friends was sitting down. She was using my computer. I was doing something on the TV. And, I, and uh, she's, she's looking at her comments like, oh my God, these pervert bastards. Like, what's wrong? Oh, it's just people keep saying nasty shit to me and blah, 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 blah on my costume pictures and other pictures. Like, well, gee, I wonder why they're doing that. I was like, so she goes... You only say it, say stuff like that when you know the answer to something. Damn, I wonder what that means. It's like, well, you could just tell me. I was like, nah, there's no point. She was like, why not? <laughs> and I was like, well, because I know how this ends because it's happened at least 20 times. See, I tell you something that is a fact. You deny it or say that it's just my opinion, even though it's not actually my opinion I'm giving you. And then you go through the uh, 12 or the... Five to six steps of denial, much like with cancer acceptance, except it ends with you denying the truth in a circle. So instead of wasting my time for the 21st time, he'll just hit the mute button. Instead of wasting No one my, wants to hear the balloon. I'm wasting my time Sorry, for the Steve. 21st time. I'm just going to, you know, nip it in the bud and say it doesn't matter because you won't listen. And even if you do, you won't do anything about it. Even though you could fix it instantly, so then she starts. Can't chast- stand people like that. So so then she starts nagging me for five minutes. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Now nah, I'm just gonna do it because I want you to leave me the fuck alone. So I tell her, I was like, look, if you think something's cool, that's fine. If you think something's sexy, that's fine too. But when you go and get them mixed up, you create situations like this. When you say this character you like. Why you like her? Well, she's cool, she's brave, she's strong and fearless. Okay, but she walks around basically in fucking bikini attire and doing smutty ass shit. Now, when other people know who that character is, and they know a lot of people quote unquote cosplay characters they want to be like, or they secretly wish they could be, it's going to keep happening. Also, it doesn't help. You keep doing sexy ass poses and poses that look like a porn star should be doing them. No, I don't. You have five doggy style poses photos strung together on your timeline as one image what's doggy style holy shit and she was 23 (laughs) so i told her what doggy style was she's like oh ew that's nasty yeah now you're gonna take that fuck and now you're gonna take it off your timeline well it's not my fault people think that i was like and it begins so then i explained to her the difference between opinion Oh, and obliviousness. It is your opinion that this is cool and brave and stuff like that, and this is how your character will be of you, but you are oblivious to the fact that society does not seem to function like that. You cannot dictate to society. Society dictates to us, and we either conform or we don't accept it, and we still just have to worry about a different type of conformity, or we say, fuck it, don't go outside and become antisocial. There is no escape. As long as you go outside, there will be people who have opinions and make judgments. And those opinions and judgments will be based on what you give them. So how do I stop it? You can't. Because in order to stop it, you would have to start dressing up as characters that are cool because of how they act or what they do, not just because they look like a porn star. But you don't do that. Well, I mean, if maybe there was a cool enough character, like someone powerful and stuff, but almost all the powerful women and stuff that end up in TV shows and anime and manga, they always dress like a certain code. I was like, oh, uh uh-huh, okay, well, I don't know because I don't necessarily go around looking for women, but 
in the case of anime, yeah, that's 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 like eighty percent of the strong women. Like, I think the last anime I saw where a strong, powerful woman was not dressed in something smutty and was actually treated like a normal person was in Gangster. What's Gangster? Now that's the redhead picture I showed you right there. I think the character's name is Sophie, right? So I showed Ashley this picture. Who she has a similar build of, and she's a redhead. You know what Ashley said? Hmm. Oh, I can't cosplay her. She wears too much. Are you fucking kidding me? No. Nope. That's what we all said in our minds. And he said out loud. Yeah, like, what the fuck? She wears too much. Yes. Apparently, she she's not naked enough for her. Now, Fiona, I'm not a girl, obviously, so I can't really describe the type of outfit she's in or what the names are, but... Go ahead and describe it for the listeners. The the Sophie? Yeah. Okay. Sophie's in a like off the shoulder thingy. Three quarter oh. sleeves. Um and very short shorts, high waist with knee high boots and knee socks. I'm sure that's basic summer attire somewhere. Yeah. Or, or you, you know, know what? what? Even fall? fall? Very early fall attire. Spring, spring attire. attire. It's pretty basic. basic. Nice little ice. Really fucking basic. Hashtag sexy basic. I'm, I'm spreading that. Now see, I'm a dude. As such... I make one of two decisions whenever I meet somebody or I see somebody on the street of the opposite gender. Do they look cute and do I think they're single? That's one. And number two, what are, are they, they wearing? Crazy? Is there anything they're wearing that could possibly indicate to me that this is not an adult female or it is a crazy person? Now, if I saw her coming down the street, the only thought I would have and this is me being as honest as possible. My genuine self is like, why the fuck did she put all of that together with cowboy boots? Mind you, I live in Chicago. So first and foremost, I'm not going to see a lot of people running around in cowboy boots anyway. But that outfit doesn't look like it. It doesn't feel like cowboy boots go with it. It's a black top, green shorts, and then brown cowboy boots or beige cowboy boots. Like... She didn't even try. That's that's as far as I'm gonna go. You know. You know that if it goes together though, that's the problem. It it goes together. And then like, uh, contrary to popular bullshit that they've been saying on TV without any factual checking, men do not think about sex every five seconds. If we did, women would never be able to go outside without an armed bodyguard and a fucking taser. Right. I don't know who started that fucking shit and it just feels so stupid. Just say it out loud and if you don't realize how stupid it is, something's wrong with you. Men think about sex every five seconds. No the fuck I don't. Let me ask. Hey husband. Yeah. Do you think about sex every five seconds? It's more like seven. He says more like seven. Well see, he still proves my point. Also, he's a husband. He has instant access to ass when he wants it. <laughs> he doesn't have to put effort into it anymore because he can just roll over. Hey, hey, you awake? And I'd be like, oh, headache. And then he rolls back over. And goes back to fucking sleep. Or he's going to go in that bathroom and he's going to beat the fuck off. And even then, guess what? <laughs> he's not going to be thinking about sex again for at least until he wakes up. <laughs> hey, you know, you know what I'm gonna be thinking about when I'm playing Final Fantasy VII Remake? Not sex. I don't know, man. Tifa and Yuffie. No, 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 no. When they get to the second game, which is like the Advent Children era, I probably will figure out how to play that game with one hand if I play Tifa. <laughs> Damn. Hey, I have my loyalties. I'm a loyal motherfucker. I've yet to cheat on any girlfriend I've ever been with, and I've yet to cheat on any of my fantasy crushes. I have liked Tifa since she was older than me. Now she's about two years younger than me. Nothing's changed. 
Actually, no. Jessica no. Rabbit. Advent, Advent Children. She's my exact age. Yeah, yeah. We're the same age now. Uh. Okay. She's 24 in Final Fantasy VII, and two years passed in Advent Children. She's my age. And when I first fell in love with her, I was eight. No, seven. So, yeah. <coughs> ah, time sure does fly when your hand is in your pants. Anyways. It's the truth, though. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. So, anybody notice anything in particular that they thought was cool at the PlayStation Experience? Um, okay, yes, I actually did. Wait, no, rush. I saw, I Please heard it say all. Go rush. ahead. I'm surprised we're bringing back Parappa the Rapper. Oh, no, 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 let's go. I'm excited! Start with, start with Fiona, we're going in order. Oh, well, fine, we'll go with me. Okay, so, you said it was a convention, correct? Yeah, a PlayStation convention by PlayStation 4 PlayStation. Okay, so, did you know that all you need to do is bring your phone and your badge and you can basically get, like... Stupid VIP stuff with just RFID in your badge. No, I did not. Yeah, you can go to panels and unlock things. Basically, they finally found a way to bridge smartphones and conventions the correct way, unlike ASIN. Right, Asus. <laughs> Dude, that Asus. shit gets so minor. Hey, let's get rid of the actual guide and let's just make it a cell phone app. Oh, and let's put spontaneous events up because I'm going to yeah. be looking at my phone and having real-time alerts and notifications to a spontaneous event that you didn't even have in your fucking program book when I'm in the middle of doing something. That shit pissed me off. Was that this year? The past two years. They got rid of all of the times time schedules and they want you to get it on an app but the thing is is that if somebody has changed or altered and even if the app updates if you're in a place where you're not getting signal which there are a billion dead zones in that uh -huh. hotel that they have never fixed in the decades that that hotel has been there fucking you'll get an alert to something that got changed or altered two hours ago because you went outside or because you went into the one bathroom where you get sick. I hate that. Yeah. Whose alarm clock? That was mine, but everybody, everybody like tells me at the last minute we're instead of leaving at six like I thought we were, we we're gonna end up leaving at six thirty, so I still got like another forty five minutes. Oh, we'll be over before that. Um <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, what games uh, were you excited about, Fiona? I didn't. I was actually just watching the convention thingy. Um, That's fine. You said the crash was coming back. All three. Fucking excited for that. And I happened to um, see a music note recently that was dropped a while ago, and. Um, that means Banjo-Kazooie. Well, that wouldn't be for PlayStation, though. No? Fuck. A music note. What game had a music note on PlayStation? Wait, it was Banjo-Kazooie with music notes, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But he was never on PlayStation. He, he was owned by Nintendo, then he got bought by Microsoft. Um, well, Crash Games, I was really thinking about the, um, Last Man Standing, no, nope. yeah, Last Man Standing, I think it was. Now that one I haven't heard about, what's that? Husband, that's, that's what, what it was called, called, right? What the fuck? Last of Us. She refers to him, oh, Last of Us 2, she refers to him like he's a fucking Pokemon, what the fuck? No name, just husband. I choose you, husband. <laughs> They're making fun of you. <laughs> no, we're not making fun of him, we're making fun of you. 
<laughs> They're making fun of me for calling you husband. Like, I'm pretty sure that's not on this birth certificate. <laughs> no, but it should be. Fucking, fucking, that's, that's the shit that got me. Uh, this is a dude I know over here. Uh, I don't know if his name's Ralph. Ralph is married ever since I met him. It took me two months to learn his fucking wife's name, even though I met her like 15 times, because he never says her fucking name. He always calls her something not her name. And then he gets offended when people don't know her name. Whose fault is that, motherfucker? Right. He would call her beautiful. I'm going to the bathroom real quick. Gorgeous. I'll be right back. I'm like, oh my God, how have you been married this long and still fucking pussy? But dude, just shh, calm the fuck down. And then one day, like, I, I was like, oh, hey, be I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, fuck. I don't know her name. So I was like, hey, listen. I don't know if you realize it, but he always calls you something that's not your name. So a lot of people actually don't know the name. Who the fuck are you? I straight up said it to her just like that. <laughs> I've been seeing her for two months. Didn't know her name. Oh, I'm Kelly. I was like, oh, because I was going to just call you that one redhead. Fucking craziness. Yeah, stop that. He's not a Pokemon. Okay. All right, uh, Haven, what have you liked about the PlayStation experience, or are you just an Xbox fanboy now? I haven't watched the PlayStation experience. You should. It's really cool. I'm just mad Final Fantasy VII wasn't there. I just want to point that out. They they mentioned that they were going to have a video for it, but I didn't see anything. Uh, I'm just trying to follow this Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> they had it there. They showed off gameplay too. Actual gameplay. Fight. What? I know, I posted it. Okay, so what they did, Fiona, was they made it so that you don't have to replay the game to actually build up your skills to the max level now. Because, you know, common sense wouldn't dictate they wouldn't have fixed that already. Right. So now... Uh, anything on your skill list has the potential to get maxed out and uh, they altered the cap or either they said they increased the cap or got rid of the cap on how many abilities and skills you can hold at once oh yours again baby alright so fucking um all right, Hill. Moment of truth. What that PlayStation experience do? Knack Two and Forever the Rapper HD remake. I'm excited. I honestly thought PlayStation didn't give a fuck anymore. They but don't. here it is. <laughs> That's honestly like one of the more left field things. I'm surprised they did. <laughs> Why bring back? Honestly, though, like, why bring back Forever the Rapper if it was so dead for, like, ten years, apparently? Because everybody was mad that they brought back Parappa the Rapper in that bullshit Smash Brothers game. Oh, PlayStation All-Stars? Here's the thing. They had a better unlockable scheme than Smash Brothers did, but that was it. Everything else was just ass. Oh, Seth Killian works on this. Oh, he knows fighting games. That don't mean shit. That does not mean shit. People keep forgetting. No matter who you are, if you are not a... Who is doing that? What? The dingy ding? Yes. yes. Are you playing That's with bells or a dog? That's my dog. I don't know what a dog. Yeah, um... Take her collar off. She's gonna freak out. Well, you... No, you could just hit the mute button, like I said. Um... Fucking... That game was whole point was to rip off Smash Brothers. What I don't get is how did they fuck it up? Every time I look at that game besides the roster's ass, I was thinking to myself, how the hell did you guys fuck this up so badly? <laughs> I mean, if you're going to rip somebody to fuck off, do you do it right? Yeah, Everybody you're gonna half ass it, it. don't do it. Perfectly. I was like, first off, they got the wrong goddamn Dante in there. Uh, as cool as Raiden is, 
It should have been Solid Snake that was in there. We all know that, let's be honest. Fucking, no one gave two shits about that Killzone character. <laughs> if memory serves, they weren't even, they didn't even make it past their own an original game. Uh, Heavenly Sword had no place being in there because the shit didn't even sell that well. Yeah, they put a lot of effort and money into it, but it didn't mean anything because that game replay value was non-existent. Once you beat that game, that was it. So, oh yeah, and then how are you going to have a fucking action game like that? That scale, that much effort goes into it, but you can't even backtrack. Like, notice how almost every single game or every single character in PlayStation All-Stars, none of their shit got a PlayStation 4 remaster or remake. So, obviously, it wasn't that good. You know who did, though? The goddamn DLC character and shitty-ass DMC Dante. Gravity Rush got a PS4 remake. DMC got a PS4 remake. Now, Gravity Rush earned it. Matter of fact... We all need to do a giant trailer exchange. Let me go pull up some trailers of some cool shit I've seen. Oh, by the way, hey, fun fact. Uh, who here knows about The Last Guardian? I do. I brought it up in your chat. Okay. When they first announced that game, me and Fiona had just got the ability to drink. That's how long they took to make that shit. That's quite, quite some time, time then. Yeah. It was supposed to come out two years after they announced it. Then they added another two years. Then they added another two years. Just like Final Fantasy fifteen. Oh, Hell, no. just they like Kingdom Hearts 3. Years. They didn't yeah. add two years. They added six years to that one. I thought it was ten years. No, no, no. It was originally going to take three years. And then... After the three years, it ballooned and they added fucking six more years. <laughs> Is it worth it though? Oh God, yes. Is it? Listen, if you now we obviously aren't going to do this because we grew up Final Fantasy, but fucking right. We gonna do some side stories, side quests. We may not do all the side stories. We may not do all the side quests, but we gonna do some. Excuse you, I am the side quest. No, I mean on your first for... playthrough. Oh no, I will. I so totes will. I'm okay, well if the that's the case, you're going to have a giant nostalgia orgasm because the side quests take you through time with Final Fantasy. They have enemies. That have only been or weren't haven't been seen since Final Fantasy fucking one in the game. And they're five times to fifteen times bigger than what they were in Final Fantasy One. And on top of that, you can fight the weapons. But they're different weapons. But instead of instead of having final weapons, they brought back the ability to get quote unquote Ultima weapons. Uh, 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 uh. She's freaking out, man. I don't you think get, she can. Uh, you get alternate uh, costumes, but they actually affect uh, your stats. And they're, they look, Okay, calm down. <laughs> and they actually look fucking cool without not fitting into the story. Stop it. And they have team attacks, but, you know, you control when they happen. So the characters don't accidentally waste extra shit. Basically, the AI on, the, on these characters is smart as fuck. It's almost like they could play the entire game themselves. Stop And it. also, as a really, really weird, really, really awkward uh, bonus fight, you can actually fight the fucking president of Square Enix as a boss. What? We don't know why what? you can't. Yeah, you, you just can. I'm going to whoop that nigga's ass for making these games take too long. That's probably why he put himself in the game. <laughs> but fucking... As a stress relief for the fans. 
<laughs> Hell yeah. I wasn't even an adult when they announced this game. When that first trailer came out, I wasn't even a fucking adult. Well, I mean, are we even adults now? Shit, I am. In the age quality, yes. In our mindset, hell no. Hill, Hill, <laughs> Hill, you are 17, okay? I just want you to know that. You're 17. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, and when you what? get around Telford, you and Telford somehow finds a way to make himself sound like he's more mature, even though he's not, and then pull you down to his 12-year-old level. I don't know how the fuck he does that, but it's hilarious. You're 17? I'm 21, but I act childish as shit. And Telford... I act childish as shit, too. No, there's a difference. When he... When Telford is the same age as him, but Telford somehow makes him act even younger. Like, that guy on the playground that won't leave you alone, and so you have a uh-uh, uh-huh fight with. They do that. Have you, have you seen Sailor Moon? Uh, <laughs> we have the same relationship of Sailor Moon and Sailor Mars at this point. <laughs> we just look at each other and hate each other. Have I seen Sailor Moon? Can someone smack him, please? Well, excuse Fiona. me, I don't know everybody's anime preference. Yeah, Fiona, he's he's a baby. He don't know shit. In fact, if memory serves, he's only been in like one anime convention ever. Or one convention <laughs> ever. Yeah, I know. I'm so Sucks. sorry. I work them. I'm trying to get him to come to the water park convention. Oh, Kalahari? Yeah. Do it. I'll be at that one. Oh, you finally we going? We can do a token games live. Well, actually, kind of. It, it would be if we could find an outlet. Or if somebody gets a room with a kitchen, we could prop... A cell, my cell phone up because my cell phone can live stream in 4K and we could uh, film uh, a round table type situation. Matter of fact, the first podcast, which I'm not sure if I kept them on the internet or not, I had a full service broadcast studio with fake backgrounds, green screens, a bunch of lights and uh, $100,000 cameras. No, I didn't own them, of course. And we just took not. one and we filmed it and we talked about the shit we wanted to talk about. But that whole crew got disbanded when I started re uh, my re-enlistment process. And then one of them ended up being a fucking selfish prick, which ironically led to me becoming a general manager of Token Games. Because originally, the shit was basically supposed to be her job, but she fucked it up and then acted like she didn't fuck it up. And it just literally fell into my lap. But since I'm also going to get free college, uh, I'm, I finished re-enrolling in the school I was in because I took I, I had um, signed up for uh, a scholastic hiatus. So I'm coming off a scholastic hiatus. Theoretically, I have access now to that same room again with the uh, cameras that cost as much as a house, green screen shit, and all those lights and blah, 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 blah. There's... There's a lot of potential for shit to get done. It's just a matter of who wants to do what and how can whatever be done. Like, right. you know, people in Ohio, people in Michigan, there's a train that drops them like a little under two miles away. I have those people come in sometimes and we sit down, chill and talk and blah, blah, blah. You know, make sure they get some food or whatever and they go about their merry business. But when it's someone like Hill... It's better if I catch him or get him to plan out his vacation days so he can come do some shit with the rest of us. Because Hill, uh, you, you're you from Atlanta, but you live in North Carolina on the base, right, Hill? I'm from California, and I'm stationed in North Carolina. Unfortunately. And so getting Hill to do shit means I either have to pick out a convention I'm going to fly to in Cali and bump into him there, have him come through. Or he has to plan on his vacation ahead of time. And if he can get the free government flights, depending on the date, if he's lucky. And even if he don't, he can still get discounts. And he can come our way. And we would just have to pick him up from the airport. Or he could take Lyft, but that might be expensive as fuck. So it would be better if one of us picked him up and maybe gave him some gas money. There's a billion ways to get Hill to go places. It's just a matter of has uh, making sure he doesn't spend up all his vacation days. Right. 
Now that's why we can't, we can't do, do it very, very often. often. Yeah. Now when it comes to uh, the CEO of the company, that's even easier because he's only in Missouri. And again, he was my old roommate for those few people who haven't seen the old podcast. Yeah. So me and him used to have an apartment in Chinatown, so he knows how to get around the city. He can take one train and one bus, and he can be all right. And the other mainstay, uh, Kara. Kara's in Michigan with you, so if anything, y'all might end up doing a carpool at best. And y'all both have the exact same amount of kids and the exact same amount of whiteness on your skin. Except I get better reactions out of her when I make fun of her whiteness. I think last time I told her she's so white her teeth got jealous. Or either <laughs> or either she's so white if I throw a marshmallow at her it'll disappear. <laughs> That's pretty white. What the fuck you laughing for? You're the same tint, literally. <laughs> So yeah, uh, there's Gravity Rush in the chat. That game looks beautiful. It, dude. They even said it, <laughs> they said dude, they said it was the most it was the most beautiful game, beautiful looking game on the Vita. Then they said, shit, people love this. Let's put it on a bigger system. Then they said this is the most colorful game on the PS4. And well, depending on how you look at it. It's really a tie between Uncharted and Gravity Rush, but they're on two different spectrums. But then when they got to game number two, which is not in America yet, but shit, I'm me. I can get that shit from Japan for free. Fucking, they just said, you know what, fuck it. Let's get real. And they basically went from the ground up to where this game was meant to be and abuse the color and lighting system on the PS4. Like, if you were to watch that trailer on a big screen HDTV, your mind would not only be blown. After it came, it would get cleaned off and then immediately proceed to vagina. Hoo-hoo! That shit will blow your mind and fuck it. <laughs> and the best part, that's the new trailer from the PlayStation Experience. Everybody wanted that girl to be okay. That sounded kind of cool. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it sounded like I didn't tape. think you guys were gonna hear that. No, I'm um no. curling ribbon. Oh, it sounded really cool. And they made the other character who co who color wise has a different illumination pattern. So now you can see the game, or you can play the game with two different characters whose effects on the color and the physics even though similar, are just as different on screen. It's beautiful. This chick name is Raven. She's got black hair on top, and she got red on the bottom. But when she turns Ooh. on her gravity abilities, oh my god, the shit is so sexy. Because her hair, her, the red part of her hair, starts glowing neon. <gasps> and it's not even explained why. And it looks fucking beautiful. What? Hit the music no, button, it's dude. covered in dirt. So yeah, fucking medicine, medicine. Like you, you, you really can't pick a better, more colorful game. And I think half the reason that they've been able to do what they did is because I don't know if y'all know what it is. I'm assuming y'all do, but uh, the whole damn game is cell shaded. And mm -hmm. as you know, cell shading gives you a whole nother approach to color and how it appears on screen than you would, you know, some hyper realistic shit like Uncharted. Not saying Uncharted is garbage, but, you know, like I said, two different spectrums of the same thing. They're both really visually stunning and beautiful. It's just for different reasons. And one of those being the fact that Gravity Rush is a cel-shaded graphic style, whereas Uncharted is going for the realism. So, yeah, uh, that's, that's enough of my little praise. Other than that, technically, I'm still hype about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinity, but... Mm. But MVC3, though, since they're putting Marvel vs. Capcom 3 on the PS4 and the PC, y'all know what this means. They're going to mod the shit out of that. I cannot wait to get the mod that puts Rogue in the game. I can't wait. And the best part, fucking, she's a character who's pretty famous, 
So there's plenty of audio clips going around where they could just splice in her original her original audio or even get audio from a TV show. I want to hear her say, good night, sugar. I fucking miss that shit. Kiss of death, baby. Oh, and then they took out her kissing a girl. Why? Why? There was nothing wrong with that. It's 2016, people. Jesus Christ. Well, no. When they took it out, it was 1998. Oh. See, in the arcade, or uh, really just for Rogue in general, you know, when she kissed somebody, and she liked it, she gets either attack up, speed up, or defense up, or my favorite, super armor. Right? But... Of course. She could also kiss Rogue. I mean, not Rogue. She could also kiss Storm. And she could also kiss herself, but when she kissed herself, nothing would happen. Well, no, of course, why would it? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, well, well, uh, it's about time to wrap this shit up, because I'm pretty sure unless somebody else got another talking point, we're all done. Um, I'm going to pass... Uh, damn, that really sounds cool. I'm going to pass <laughs> Fiona and Hill, uh, the first season of Mr. Robot. I'm going to put as much of it on the Dropbox as possible. And then once y'all get the first five episodes, let me know. And then I can go and, you know, take them off back and forth. I'll drop the links in your uh, Facebooks individually. And, uh, yeah. All right. So, yeah, let me just uh, rile up Hill one good time real quick. Hey, Hill, guess what? Yeah. Guess what they did in Dead or Alive 5? More fucking bullshit? Mm, kind of. They added a new character for the low, low price of $7.99. Go but, fuck yourself! What the fuck? <laughs> but guess who it is, Hill? Guess who it is? Who? It's a character from another fighting game. A smut character from another fighting game. And she fits right in, even though she doesn't fit into her top. Take a look at the chat box. Go ahead and click it. Click it. Good. I have to. Well, no, Hill has to. <laughs> How dare you? How fucking dare you? And now he wants it. No, I do not. He's mad. It's funny when he's See, mad. I like the original game she fucking came from. For those not of you who can't see it, Dead or Alive has introduced a second crossover character, but not from the Dynasty Warrior series. It's a character named Mai Shiranui from the SNK spectacular, The King of Fighters. That game is fucking good as shit. You know? Mai Shiranui, like besides being a flame ninja, is also known for basically wearing the equivalent of a stripper ninja's uniform and having a fighting pose that defies common sense. She hunches over, again in the doggy style pose, which comes up a lot. But since she's got nothing on front to hold on to, she just sways her boobs back and forth directly into the player's camera angle in every game she's been in. She doesn't even stand up straight. She literally hunches over, swings her boobs around like a damn pendulum. This is the first game where Mai has actually come close to standing up. Like a human being who's not a sex object. Oh, shit. I know. Somebody got fired that day. Right? <laughs> a female character who's not a sex object? Get out of my house! It's like, it's, it's, it's almost as if somebody in Japan woke up and said, You know what? Let's objectify women because they're not real women. Which... Technically, you know, if the if the personality denotes that, that's fine. But then when they do dumb shit, it's like, why the fuck is this here? This character isn't even like this. It's just confusing. That's why I don't like the damn stripper and slut outfits in, like, all the Resident Evil games. Except for fucking Pirate Jill. Oh my god, the artwork on that character is so sexy. Like, I, it actually made my heart stop for a second. I had to be told that was Jill Valentine. If you go look up Pirate Jill from Resident Evil Revelations 1, oh my god. No. 
Anyways, all right. Well, with that being said, uh, I don't have anything special to say because, like I said, it was just fucking around. And again, the real podcast is going to be Tuesday. I just have to decide, is it going to be around lunch or is it going to be 5 o'clock CST? As per usual, everybody wants to be in it, but don't nobody fucking reply when I ask them what time works best for them. So I don't fucking know. I always reply. Five cents cheap. With the exception of Fiona. Brad? So, yeah. Everyone except Fiona usually doesn't say shit. Anyways. Alright, so yeah, Fiona, you go ahead and enjoy that uh, little Ruben Langdon interview and keep doing what you're doing. Uh, if you ever get your website up or if you ever just want to post your shit so people can buy it off of our web store, let me know. That's perfectly fine, too. Um, it just has to be... I post it on there? Well, yeah, you would have to run it through me, but the CEO doesn't mind you fucking, you know, putting up what your item is, what it looks like, and then having people be able to purchase it. And But here's the thing. Okay. You, after that, you are the one who's responsible for getting people to go to that website to purchase it. And I would strongly use that because then that could mean you could get sales from like out of state or out of country and shit. And then you can charge them a stupid ass fee for shipping and make profit. Right. Anyways. All right, people. The PlayStation experience is pretty much done. Uh, Go look up whatever you can on YouTube. And uh, yeah, enjoy it. Make sure you have some decent topics come Tuesday. Um, okay. See y'all when I see y'all.